In this lesson, I want to talk about what a bare repository is in Git. Now, you might not come upon these very often, but there may be times where you do need to generate a bare repository or initialize a bare repository. So let's look at what the difference is between a normal repository and a bare repository and also how to create a bare repository. All right, let's look down here at the computer. I have two directories here one called bare, one called normal. So let's go into normal. And this is the typical thing, right? We do git init inside of the directory where we want to initialize a new git repository. And as you can see, it initialized the empty git repository at this path in the normal directory. And we see we have our .git directory. And if we look at the .git directory, let's see, then we do .git. You can see we have all of the, the, the inners, the pieces that make actual Git repositories work. There's head, there's the branches directory, the config, the hooks directory, the objects, which is how Git stores all of your changes, the refs, which is how we track where we're at, which branch we're on, which branch, uh, where the branch is pointed, all that good stuff. So that's a normal Git repository. So I can go in here now and, you know, make a file and then go ahead and add it to the repository and commit it like that. And I have a, a pretty much a normal repository here in this normal directory. I have files and directories that I work with as part of my project. So this is a normal Git repository. So if we back out and we go into bear, now let's talk about how we create our bare repository and what that is. Summed up in one sentence, a bare repository is a Git repository that is created without a working tree. And we generate it very similar. We use git init to initialize the new repository, but we use the bare option. And this generates the repository in a slightly different way. So now we have our empty git repository initialized in users Ryan training git bare slash bare. Now you notice what's missing is that dot git directory. Well, that should clue us in because we now have something a little bit different. If I list out here, you can see that in what would normally be the working tree, we actually have the innards of git. So what does this mean? Well, git bare repositories are used for stuff like remotes. If you push to a remote, that's typically a bare repository because you're not actually working on the remote itself. You don't have a working tree there. It's just the database part that's in the tracking part. It's the innards of Git that are located on that remote, not the stuff that you need as a user to interact with Git with the project files. And that's the difference. That's the difference between a remote, which is created using a bare repository and your local working repository that you have locally on your machine, which is then just uh, both the Git directory and the working tree. Now, a reason that you might want to create a bare repository is if you are setting up a remote. In another lesson, I'm going to talk about how to create a remote locally and push and pull to and from it. And I'll show you how to do that because we're going to use a bare repository in Git. All right, so if you were ever wondering what a bare repository is in Git and how to create one, now you know. The next time you come across somebody talking about a bare repository or you see it in documentation or mentioned somewhere online, you'll know what a bare repository is and how it can be used. Thanks for watching. If you want to learn everything you need to know about Git version control, I encourage you to go to majingo.com slash git dash essentials and get the full bundle of learning materials that will take you from beginning to advanced in learning how to use Git effectively and quickly and make your projects better and smoother and faster. All right, take care and I'll see you in the next video.